This episode sponsored by Clio, cloud-based practice management software. Makes it easy to manage your law firm from intake to invoice. Try it for free at clio.com. That's C-L-I-O dot com. C-L-I-O dot com. Hello and welcome to another edition of On the Road with Legal Talk Network. This is Lawrence Scaletti and I'm the host for today's show, which is being recorded on location at the 2019 Clio Cloud Conference in my hometown, San Diego, America's finest city. It's my honor to have Mr. Jack Newton, the co-founder of Clio. Welcome to the show, sir. Thanks for having me here, Lawrence. So before we get started, we got a lot to cover. We went to your keynote address today, and it was uh, well, it was a lot of ground to cover. A tremendous presentation. Thank you. I want to learn a little bit more about you. For some of our listeners that may not be familiar, Jack, I know you're the co-founder of Clio, but tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, so I, I'm the the co-founder of Clio. Uh, started Clio with my co-founder Ryan Govro, just over 11 years ago, and I came to Clio from the computer science side of things. So I'm a technologist by training. Ryan had the experience of working hands-on with legal technology at, at one of Canada's largest law firms, Gowlings. And we put our heads together back in 2008 and, uh, and created Clio. It's been a, a wild 11-year uh, ride uh, to get to this point. You guys have grown like a juggernaut. It's just been absolutely incredible to watch the pace. And it seems to be picking up, but um, I want to get back to your keynote. So there's so much to cover. So I want to unpack it in three basic parts. So I'm going to kind of map this out for the listener a little bit. So my, my first area of questions is going to be Clio's ethos. And the second part is going to be the innovations and updates for 2019. And then I'm going to trail it off with an entrepreneurship question. You've Sound, grown this enormous great. company. So excellent. Thank you so much. And so, Jack, let's rewind just a little bit. I mean, it's been 11 years in. And so we've been covering you all for about, uh, you know, your, your Clio Cloud Conference for four or five years. Might be more, you know. Yeah, so, um, yeah five or six years, I think. That's right. From Chicago to New Orleans to here. Yep. Yep. So, in 2017, you all had this, uh, you, you talked about this moonshot, and basically the gist was, we're going to do something incredibly audacious with our company. Yeah. And so it was about doing all the hard things. And so that was 2017. In 2018, it became about transforming the practice of law for good. We're still working on that. Yep. You guys are still proceeding down those lines. And now in 2019, the main theme is thrive. Right. And so uh, to do that, you've got a two-column master plan. And so uh, part one is building the operating system for legal. Yes. And part two is increasing the access to justice. So Jack, if you could make a little uh, make a little sense of that for us with all these components and company objectives, what is Clio's ethos? Sure. I, I think a really simple way of framing what I talked about in the keynote in terms of the two dimensions that we see innovation needing to happen in legal. One is in terms of productivity. And uh, the second dimension is about delivering exceptional client experiences to your, to your clients. So when I talk about the operating system for legal, I'm talking about primarily the need for technology to be adopted more broadly in legal. We're still in the very early days of technology being adopted in legal. And at this point, I actually think legal is the last major industry to be fundamentally transformed by technology. And the opportunity we see ahead of us at Clio is to, to really be the company that drives technological transformation in a meaningful way in legal. And we think that presents, obviously, the company Clio with a lot of opportunities, but I fundamentally believe it also presents lawyers and the legal space as a whole with a lot of opportunity. If we do our job well, we'll be unlocking an enormous amount of opportunity for lawyers to go and get after a, a, a bigger market. So, so part one is really about building that legal operating system where we'd love to see, just as Bill Gates said, his vision was to see a PC on every desk and in every home. Our vision is to see Clio in every law office of every size and in every lawyer's pocket with their smartphone. And we're well on our way to realizing that vision, but being the operating system, uh, providing that foundation on which new innovations can be built is also an important aspect of being an operating system. So Clio as an operating system, we kind of provide the core stuff that every law firm needs. So calendaring and matter management and document management and task management, all of these things that really every law firm would need is provided in that operating system layer. 
And the other investment we've made over the last five or six years that's starting to really pay some massive dividends is the investment in our platform, where just over the last year, we've released or announced 35 new integration partners on the Clio platform. That brings the number of integrations on the Clio platform to almost 200, 197 to be precise. Uh, so there's this thriving app ecosystem sitting on top of this operating system for legal, and we really think that's what will help us transform the practice of law for good. This is something we, we know and we understand that we won't be able to do alone. This is gonna be something we lock arms with a bunch of different companies driving legal innovation and do this uh, in cooperation with them. So that's part one of the secret master plan uh, for, for Clio. Part two of the secret master plan for Clio is really focusing on access to justice. And what I mean when I talk about access to justice is improving product market fit between the product that lawyers are offering, which is their legal services and however they choose to package them up uh, in terms of pricing and so on, and better bridging that gap with the demand side of clients that are looking for solutions to their legal problems. And the massive, massive opportunity that I see for the legal space as a whole is to unlock what I talk about as the, the latent legal market. The 77% of needs that the World Justice Project identifies as the 77% of legal needs that consumers have that go unmet or unresolved by a lawyer. If we can help make progress in connecting the 77% of consumers that have legal issues that go unresolved with help from a lawyer, and we connect those consumers with the 81% of lawyers that tell us they're looking for more clients, it feels like there's an enormous opportunity to be generated there. And we know there's an enormous opportunity because just with that relatively small amount of overlap between the product and the market, that Venn diagram that I, I, I showed in my keynote showing just a 23% overlap between the product and the market, if we execute on that opportunity, we turn the annual $437 billion of legal spend that exists today into a potential $1.4 trillion of, of legal spend. And this is the second big part of our master plan, which is to better connect clients and lawyers, to better enable lawyers to serve more clients more efficiently, and to simultaneously deliver a better client experience for them. And if we think, we think if we do a great job of that, we'll be able to better connect the demand in the legal market with the supply in the legal market, and make more lawyers more successful, make clients happier, see more legal problems get resolved, and improve access to justice. And I think it's a really straightforward plan for how we can increase access to justice. And really it comes down to lawyers being entrepreneurial and innovating in the way that they're delivering their legal services. Well, so 2019 has been a very big year and it seems like the growth and pace of Clio just keeps accelerating. And so you've done some, I mean, a it lot of things. It feels like that most days to me. <laughs> I, I bet it does. And I don't know how you do it. I mean, you travel all over the country and still manage to run this very big company. I mean, that's just incredible. And it actually gets to my last question for you about uh, entrepreneurship. But before we get there, sure. I want to talk about the innovation and updates for Clio this year. So sure. I know that there's some product-specific updates uh, in terms of the scheduler, Clio Payments, mobile app reboots, yep. and the uh, firm dashboard. So can we get a little information on that? Yeah, uh, you know, we talked about a lot of stuff on the product front today, but maybe to extract what I would consider three of the, the top highlights. One was a complete reimagining and redevelopment of our mobile app, which we're releasing on both Android and iOS today at the conference. This is a ground up re-engineering, but also reimagining of what the mobile interface should look like with the benefit of looking at all of the best in class apps that are out there today, some of the new usage patterns and, and new modalities that exist for interacting with, with mobile apps today, uh, reflecting the, the significant innovation we've seen in mobile app user experience over the last five years as well. We've folded a lot of those learnings into Clio. We've got the benefit of seeing now five years of usage data with a mobile app to know what our customers really want to see work well in the mobile app. And at an engineering level, we've done a bunch of things to make the mobile app more responsive and more, uh, just a better user experience overall. So thrilled to ship the new mobile app. The second major feature we announced was the firm performance dashboard. And 
this is a feature we're super excited to, to release because for four legal trends reports now, we've been banging the drum about how important it is to monitor your firm performance metrics and to track your law firm's utilization rate, realization rate, and collection rate and optimize the three key performance indicators or KPIs over time. And now we actually surface all of this data from within Clio in this new firm performance dashboard that lets you see exactly how your utilization rate, realization rate, and collection rate are changing over time and what they look like in real time from within Clio. So this was one of those features that prompted a, a spontaneous round of applause from, uh, from attendees in the keynote today. I think people are really thrilled to see that. And the last feature that, that I, I think I'm most excited about is the Clio Grow Scheduler that makes the process of scheduling appointments with a lawyer from within that's using Clio Grow for a client a completely seamless and effortless experience where the lawyer can publish essentially appointment slots in their calendar to Clio, let us know when they'd be amenable to taking meetings, and then through a meeting scheduling link that exists either in the lawyer's website or that they send clients via an email link, the client can simply load up a web page, click the date and the time that they'd like to meet with a lawyer, and with no further action on their part, see that appointment added to their calendar, and the lawyer sees that same appointment added to their Clio calendar, and in Clio Grow sees a new lead show up in their pipeline in Clio Grow. So I think this is a great example of the kind of feature that really fits well with this, this rubric reintroduced called the, the law firm maturity model, where you have firm performance on the x-axis and client experience on the y-axis. Uh, I know we're on radio and, and this is better described visually. Your listeners can, can definitely check out the legal trends report for what this looks like in graphic form. But the basic idea is that things like scheduler live in this quadrant of that law firm maturity model that is both improving law firm productivity because we just saved you many emails back and forth. I think it was eight emails. Was eight emails on average. You're right to, to schedule the average meeting over email. That's and we a lot all, of time. We all know how painful that process is. And it's a lot of time. And it's a better client experience where I have full confidence a client would prefer to work with a lawyer that is using these kinds of tools that makes the scheduling process effortless for them over a lawyer who's not. And I think that's a massive, massive opportunity. Well, that's a great transition into my next uh, question here related to the innovations and updates. So Legal Trends Report. Now, obviously, 2016, we were there when you dropped a monstrous bombshell that, on the audience. That's a good way of putting it. So that's it right. surprised people that it was back to the billable hour, and it was a surprisingly low amount of a lawyer's day on average, like kind of solo small firm. That's right. Was spent in, in terms of actual billables, and it surprised everybody. And then, but at the same time, everybody kind of nodded. It's like, actually, that sounds about right. Yeah, I think everyone in their heart of hearts knew that all the numbers were about right. Yeah. So you definitely, uh, listeners, you definitely check out the 2016 report. It's got that, uh, it's got that, uh, that fact into that statistic. But uh, this year, you changed the focus a little bit, uh, the Legal Trends Report, uh, towards a secret shopper program. That's right. That's right. And so uh, if you could tell our audience a little bit about that. Yeah, so I'll, I'll lead into the story a little bit. What we saw with the data that we, we were looking at in the Legal Trends Report was the consumer survey, where we surveyed over 2,000 consumers to understand their experiences of shopping for a law firm. And what we saw among other data points in this consumer research was an indication that 67% of consumers said that they had an inquiry to a law firm that they did not receive any kind of response from the law firm. And this, this was survey data from, from consumers, but this was a bit of a, a red flag for us. We, we looked at this data and thought, is this true that a you know, majority of consumers have experienced complete unresponsiveness from the law firms they've reached out to. And we really wanted to validate this data point. The other data point that was stuck in the back of my mind was from a conversation with Mark Britton of Avo from a few years back when he shared with me that less than 20% of the leads that Avo sent to lawyers in their network, that these lawyers were paying for these leads, by the way, less than 20% of those leads ever received a response from a lawyer in the Avo network. And I thought that was just an incredible stat. And what we did in, in response to both of those data points was basically this, this secret shopper initiative that you describe, where we put law firms to the test with 
we, we hired an independent third-party research firm to actually do a pretty large-scale study where they, through both email and phone, reached out to a thousand law firms uh, of many different practice areas. You can read all the, the specific details in the Legal Trends Report, but reached out to these law firms and by email and by phone, you know, essentially posed as a, a plausible lead for this law firm. So they checked all the boxes in terms of having a real case, representing a real opportunity for this law firm. And what we saw in this secret shopping exercise was some pretty devastating statistics for the, the legal space. For the email-based reach out, 60% of the law firms we reached out to did not respond to our email at all. So the majority of law firms simply did not respond to our email. And of the 40% that did respond to our email, 71% did not respond in what we regarded as an adequate response or with an adequate response. So that means they would respond with something like, uh, thanks for your email, please phone me, you know, as, as the next step. Only 29% of the law firms that responded to our email provided what we regarded as an in-depth, accurate, inf informed response that addressed the questions we laid out in that email. Now, let's move on to the phone call side of the equation. And unfortunately, the news is not much better over on the phone-based communication side. We reached out to a subset of 500 of the law firms that we reached out to initially in the 1,000 emails and found that only 56% of the law firms that we phoned picked up the phone in real time with a, with a real live either lawyer or support staff answering the phone call. 39% of our calls went to voicemail. And of the calls that went to voicemail, 57% of the lawyers that we left voicemails with did not return our call within 72 hours. Wow. So I know that's, that's a lot of data. It's presented in a, you know, a, a pretty comprehensive and, and digestible way in the Legal Trends Report. But what I, what I think this data ultimately tells us the story of is, number one, when we talk about improving access to justice, it can, in some cases, just be as straightforward as picking up the phone or answering an email because all of these are clients with real legal needs that are not having their, their needs met in an effective way, in a responsive way, by the legal services market as it exists today. I think it highlights that there's some very, lo very low-hanging fruit available to lawyers that want to innovate by, for example, hiring one of the many, uh, you know, just on the exhibit floor here, we have at least three call answering services that directly integrate with Clio that can be hired to pick up the phone and put a lead directly into Clio for you so you can be responsive and track that lead effectively. There's many tools both within Clio and outside of Clio through you know, marketing automation tools that allow you to be responsive to email-based inquiries without you actually physically having to respond to those personally as a lawyer. And I think what this is is really ultimately, a, you know, we didn't do this survey, we didn't do this secret shopping exercise to embarrass or call out lawyers, but to highlight the fact that we believe lawyers are structurally set up for failure in a lot of ways when it comes to being responsive and they need to embrace and adopt processes, tools, and technology that allow them to, to be responsive to clients in a more comprehensive way. So I'm, uh, I'm getting the eye from Sasha Perrin, so we'll have to move <laughs> very quickly now. So I do have a couple more questions. So we'll, this one's really important. So I bring this question up as someone that used to purchase services for the medical industry. Sure. And so one of the questions we would ask uh, whatever provider it was of whatever service was how long they've been in business. Right. And the reason we did that was because it takes time and effort to train your staff on how to use a new product or service. And we didn't want to invest in something that wasn't going to be around. Uh, you know, in the future. And so uh, by that, I know that you all came by a pretty big investment to infuse a lot of horsepower into Clio. Yes. So if you could tell us about that and also the family of investments that you're now involved in. Sure. So we, back in September, announced our $250 million Series D financing transaction where uh, two amazing financial partners, TCV and JMI Equity, uh, invested $250 million in, in Clio. And this is obviously a massive amount of money. But what they, what they were underwriting and what I think is really hugely encouraging for me is they, they were really 
underwriting and validating our vision for transforming the practice of law for good. When I talk about our two-pronged secret plan of becoming the operating system for legal and for increasing access to justice by better connecting lawyers and clients, they really believed in that opportunity and believed in the opportunity for Clio to develop into a multi-billion dollar company uh, that fundamentally transforms one of the largest, most important industries in, in the United States and, and worldwide, which is the legal industry. One of the reasons I was really excited about partnering with TCV and JMI is they have a really comprehensive track record in investing in companies that are not just clear leaders in their industries, but also companies that have radically transformed the industries and in some cases created the industries in which they reside. So some of the portfolio companies were, that are now part of our family are companies like Airbnb and Netflix and Peloton and Spotify that wow. uh, the list goes on. Uh, the companies that have really fundamentally transformed their industries and been unbelievably innovative. And, and we want to be that company for legal where we, we look back at legal almost in a pre-Clio and post-Clio way and that, that Clio has ended up being that, that agent of dramatic change and, and agent of transformation that helps, has helped turn legal into the kind of industry that we think it can be in the future. So my last question has to go back to Clio's ethos. Sure. And so this is an entrepreneurship question. And so, you know, Jack, over the years, we've come to the Clio Cloud Conference, gotten a front row seat to watch you all grow. Yep. And I know last year you added just a ton of employees to it. So I started with you and Ryan. That was two employees. Two. Yep. And now, now what, what's that number up to? We're almost 500 employees. So 500. It's over the course of 11 years. Yep. And so you've had a, a conference that's gone from 200 to over 2,000. You've been in multiple cities. You have 200 integration partners, what, 150,000 clients now? Yep. So that's over the course of 11 years. And obviously, that is a lot to supervise and manage and run. And so, you know, most lawyers out there run their own firm. That's just kind of the demographic of the legal profession. And so just in terms of your philosophy of leadership, you know, Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, my philosophy around leadership is, is pretty straightforward where it's about hiring great people and expecting great things for them, setting them up for success and wrapping them with a support system that sets them up for success and then stepping back and watching them do great things. So one of the, uh, one of the core values we have at Clio is, uh, is a core value. Uh, I hope it's okay that I'm... I'm slightly profane on the on the uh, show here sure it, it's uh the core value is draw the fucking owl or dtfo as we call it at clio sometimes or draw the effing owl first i'll tell you about the meme this comes from if you if you google draw the effing owl what you'll see come up is really fantastic it's uh, a meme that went around the internet over 10 years ago that that really resonated with me and ryan and what it shows this what this picture shows is almost like the, the instructions from an old children's drawing book that is how to draw an owl. And step one is draw a small circle for the head and draw a second bigger circle for the body. And then step two shows this immaculately perfectly realized owl that looks like it's out of an encyclopedia line drawing of what, a, what an owl looks like, a beautiful illustration. And step two says, draw the rest of the fucking owl. And, <laughs> and you know, what, what really I, I think resonated with me is his... The fact that the, the best thing we can do at Clio is, is hire people that can draw the owl, that can take the broad strokes and build out something really fantastic without being micromanaged. And that's, that's really been my, my leadership philosophy over the years. Uh, you know, we, we have a vision of building an organization that we call human and high performing, where we have a team that is achieving exceptionally great things, uh, but they're doing it in a way that is compassionate to their needs as a human being and that we wrap them in a support system with things like coaching, for example. We, we make coaching available to everyone in our team from our performance coaches internally that set them up to do great things. So we have high expectations, but we also invest in a support ecosystem. We have an unbelievable talent development team and a performance development team uh, led by Lindsay Hannigan that that really nurtures our, our employees and sets them up for success. So that is 
our uh, our leadership ethos. And I, I know we're almost out of time, so I'll, I'll stop there. We are out of time because uh, <laughs> because I'm getting I'm getting the eye. Well, it looks like we've reached the end of the road for our episode today. I want to thank Jack for joining us. And Jack, before we sign off uh, officially here, uh, if you could tell us a little bit about your new book, the Client Centered Law Firm, and some contact information for our listeners if they want to reach out. Yeah, so I launched uh, my first book. I'm really excited to announce the Client Centered Law Firm at the conference today. The book's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and every other place that you can buy books for pre-order today, and it's launching in January of 2020. Really, really thrilled to, uh, to release that. You can find out more at theclientcenteredlawfirm.com, and you can reach out to me on Twitter at Jack underscore Newton or on email at Jack at Clio.com. Thank you so much, Jack. Thanks, Lawrence. Also, thank you to our listeners for tuning in. If you like what you heard, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or best yet, your favorite podcasting app. I'm Lawrence Cloddy. Until next time, thank you for listening. If you'd like more information about what you've heard today, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via iTunes and RSS. Find us on Twitter and Facebook. Or download our free Legal Talk Network app in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer. Uh-huh.